Uh, so hello, uh, thank you for coming uh, to our presentation about uh, parallel streams in FEDER. I'm Zuzana Miklankova, this is Filip Janusz, we are from the databases team uh, from Red Hat. And yeah. uh, in this talk, we would like to explain at first what are the parallel streams. Uh, then we would like to dive into history a bit because there were multiple options how to handle the parallel streams in Fedora and, until this day. Um, and then we will like to present our current solution that we use you know, for the databases components uh, in, in, in RHEL and in Fedora. Uh, then there is a live demo and a conclusion at the end. So thank you, Zuzka, for interacting me. So first of all, uh, we should answer the question, do we really need uh, multiple stream support? And maybe I would like to ask audience, have you ever need used multiple version of package in your workstation server? Is it? Yes. So we need to solve it. And basically, uh, there are two main group of users. The first group prefer stable system for decades without big updates, without breakage, and so on. And the other group wants the latest features, and new features, uh, updates, everything have updated. So there is another question. How should we satisfy both groups? Yes, the, the answer seems to be really simple and easy. Let's deliver multiple streams and both groups will be happy. But now there is a question about how should we approach it technically. There were a couple of attempts how to solve it. For example, software collection, even press software collections uh, solutions, modularity. Nowadays we are working, working on postmodular solutions, but uh, Will be the, this our postmodular solution the final one? Who knows? Maybe we will be here in a few years and we will be discussing the same topic. So now Zuska will continue with some history. Ah, oh, sorry. So mm, one more slide. Uh, before we will continue, we should clarify two terms. Parallel availability means that the uh, package is mm, in Federal repository in multiple versions, and parallel installability means that uh, the two version, two packages could be installed in parallel. Two same packages if in different versions could be installed in parallel. So now the history. Uh, yeah, so even before software collections, we already mentioned software collections, uh, there were some possibilities how to install multiple streams of packages in, in Linux distributions. There were and still are environment modules and alternatives. Environment modules uh, change the environment of, of the uh, running programs and alternatives uh, uh, change the system like system-wide. Um, but uh, further attempts were done even though uh, this solution exists and uh, the software collections uh, initiated in, uh, in Fedora. Uh, this was around the uh, year 2013. Uh, they provide parallel instability, uh, so it's possible to install multiple uh, packages of, the, of different versions at the same time. Uh, and this brings uh, some disadvantages, uh, like complicated spec, uh, spec file changes, that it's uh, uh, really a lot of changes are needed in the spec files in order to, to make them uh, software collections compatible. And also, uh, if you want to install the same program with the same name uh, multiple times, uh, the standard installation paths are no longer uh, sufficient for it. So uh, non-standard installation and data paths were, uh, were introduced uh, in software collections. Uh, and in Fedora, this never really got into, uh, into uh, standard repositories, but uh, the software collections could be installed from, so from separate uh, repositories from software collections. Or um, what was uh, great about the software collections was that no uh, changes in infrastructure were needed, um, uh, and that was uh, more important for maintainers than for users, I would say. Uh, now let's uh, have a quick overview of modularity. Probably all of you have ever heard about this technology. 
maybe I can ask you, uh, is here anyone who has never heard about this technology? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> so we can go really quickly. quickly. Uh, it was really complex, advanced, and maybe ambitious technology uh, that has also advantages and disadvantages. As I mentioned, it was really complex. So it uh, needed uh, a lot of changes in build system, in Git. Uh, also, maintainers needed to change their workflow somehow. Uh, DNF need implements a couple of commands to be able to work with uh, modularity. But on the other hand, many features are provided by this technology are provided uh, for users, but also for package maintainers. For example, users could profit from simply why handy DNF commands like DNF module list, reset, and so on. And package maintainers could profit, for example, from native support of chain builds. And to be honest, it was sometimes really painful to build modules. But it was somehow working. They had a somehow working technology. It was advanced and complex. But suddenly came Fedora change. Modularity was retired. And we were at the beginning with the question how we should approach the problem with delivering multiple streams. So now Ruska will start presenting our solution. Um, yeah, so as you uh, can see from the history, uh, we had uh, many approaches to learn from. Uh, we, we already know some advantages and the disadvantages the approaches brought. So we have a kind of clear set of goals we need to um, deliver with this new packaging of, the, of uh, multiple streams. So uh, uh, the most important are involved and... Um, is, uh, for example, the uh, default stream definition. Every time in any package, there should be only one default uh, version of it, and uh, some other alternative version can be uh, uh, delivered uh, to. Uh, then we want to use the existing infrastructure, because uh, we knew from the modules that it's not always easy to build new infrastructure and uh, to use it, and uh, in, in, it brings like many challenges. And we want, wanted it to be transparent for users too, because we are doing this for the users and we want the users to be able to, to use the multiple streams. So uh, also we wanted to aim for parallel avail availability and not installability. And that's because of the standard paths that the software collections, for example, didn't have. And we wanted to maintain the start standard install path and the service names. Uh, we also wanted to support uh, version switch. So, for example, if you have PostgreSQL 16, you can switch to PostgreSQL 17 or later ver versions. Uh, now, uh, some other dictionary. Uh, Compact package uh, is a uh, package introduced when some breaking ch changes happens in a very important package. For example, in, in Zenlib, we had recently uh, uh, change to from Zlib to Zlib ng, and because of that, many dependencies would be broken. So, uh, so our colleague produced Zlib compat package, and uh, and the uh, dep dependencies didn't break because they could use the compatible package. Uh, then virtual provide uh, every RPM package uh, provides uh, multiple symbols. They can be like actual, um, uh, for example. PostgreSQL provides PostgreSQL. It, it makes sense, but the symbols also can be like virtual. That they doesn't really mean that any physical thing is delivered. And uh, DNF and RPM can uh, have conflicts and provides on these virtual symbols. And then source RPM is uh, archive for the uh, RPM build to know how to build the uh, resulting RPM. Okay, now we words throw. Solution. From the beginning, we were working with two slightly different approaches. Uh, the first one was uh, meta packages, and the second one 
was uh, compact packages with virtual provides. Finally, we decided to use uh, compact packages with virtual provides, uh, and we had to add the version to package name uh, to distinguish uh, the streams. And also, as Zuzinska mentioned, we had to implement somehow the defaultness of the stream. Now, uh, I would like to present it uh, one example. Uh, as we are from the database team, so we have chosen PostgreSQL as an example. So uh, our uh, technical solution uh, could be simplified into three main uh, technical goals. Uh, we wanted to use existing infrastructure. We want to uh, deliver parallel streams, so there is parallel availability, but not parallel installability, and the default stream definition. I would start with uh, using existing infrastructure. This requirement um, limits us uh, to just uh, hacking the spec files, and two goals are remaining. So let's take a closer look on parallel availability. For this purpose, uh, we had to distinguish the packages. So we have added a stream name in, uh, into the package name. So we can see there is PostgreSQL 17 and PostgreSQL 16 names uh, here. So, but uh, I mentioned that we do not want to support parallel installability. For this purpose, we have added a dash any symbol that is uh, present in every single sub package of, let's say, of PostgreSQL. And also, we have added this symbol into the conflict section. This uh, effectively means that only the sub packages could, from the one stream could be combined and installed in parallel. Uh, and it would uh, conflict with another stream. And the last goal, uh, we had to implement some mechanism how to set up the defaultness. Uh, for this purpose, uh, we used RPM name. The only the default stream produce a package name without the version, so in this case PostgreSQL, and it also provides us in provide. But only the default version provides PostgreSQL symbol, so DNF could, could not be confused by many PostgreSQL symbols in a repository, we will choose the default stream. And now I would like to present some challenges we met during our journey. The first one was uh, DNF behavior. There is slight uh, difference between DNF install and DNF build app. Hmm. Originally, we have a concept that is shown in the upper part of our slide. You can see there are no dash any symbols. We relied only on PostgreSQL. It should ensure conflict. And the, the defaultness was solved by the RPM name. Only the default stream produced RPM name without version. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it, it worked with DNF install. But uh, DNF build up behaves differently. It seems to that DNF install has priority to resolve uh, firstly RPM name and then provides. But the DNF build up uh, seems to omit RPM name and results just provides. So it behaves differently and it was unacceptable for our solution. So we had to adjust our solution. We removed the PostgreSQL provide from every single package, every single stream. We add uh, dash any symbol to every single uh, package and sub package and only the default stream produced symbol PostgreSQL. So as I mentioned previously, there is no other option than install the default stream for DNF. 
more deeply we can see than in our live demo. Uh, there were some other challenges uh, that are um, still there. Uh, the SRPM names and the RPM names are different in the default stream, as you uh, uh, can see from the slide that Philip uh, talked about. Um, and uh, some tools use SRPM names, some tools use uh, RPM names for resolution of RPMs. For example, Koji and Git uses SRPM. So, so if you want to find some RPM in, in Git or Koji, you, you can probably uh, be confused, and then if it uses the RPM names. This is a more challenge for maintainers than for, for users, I guess. Um, then there is the uh, file requirement uh, thing, um, and that is that DNF cannot really say uh, which version of the, st of the package you want to have installed if you require only some file in, in the spec file or... or um, or when you are installing the package. So, for example, if you want to uh, install Postgres or by user bin Postgres, then it's like undefined what version uh, are you uh, being installed. But uh, this is some kind of um, this is discouraged in uh, Fedora uh, guidelines to, to do this, and there are more tricks uh, connected to uh, resolving the the files. So, so if you stick to Fedora guidelines, guidelines, you should be okay. So, and now I would like to show you our live demo. Uh, yeah, um, we prepared uh, uh, environment in a, in a, a container image, and that's because we want to show you uh, the demo on PostgreSQL 17, which is not yet released in Fedora, so we uh, just created our own repository and put it into uh, the image. Yes, so Zuzka will try to type the commands that are shown on the slides. So first of all, uh, we can just show the, what our packages are providing. So just a minute. To... Yes, and we can see that PostgreSQL 16 is the default version, and it also provides it also provides the unversioned uh, package name. But to be consistent with other streams, it also provides a uh, version. version. Uh, then there is a, an alternative version, PostgreSQL 17, and it's, as it's an, is an alternative, there is no unversioned symbol except PostgreSQL server any. And, but it's, it doesn't matter. Also, we will show the conflict. Uh, this is the conflicting symbol, and the same output should produce for the scale 17. Now, we will like to show you some simple installation. First of all, we will try to install the default stream. And and the alternative one from the, our Cooper repository. So, yes, we want to install for the 17. Now, this works just fine. Now, we can move forward to some extensions. Uh, in modules, it was not built only PostgreSQL itself, but also uh, some extensions like PG Repack, PG Audit, and so on that needs to be built uh, directly against the current version of PostgreSQL. So for this purpose, we had to add also the extension for every single PostgreSQL stream. So in this case, it wants to install PG Repack and it also installs PostgreSQL 16 as a default version. And if we want to install the alternative version of PG Repack for PostgreSQL 17, as you can see, that will automatically wants to install for this 17. Now, let's check some version switch update from the default version to 
the alternative, the Lipali 16, so we can switch to newer version. Yes, it would, it would like to drop the old version and install the new one. And now let's take a look, closer look to conflicts. If we, want, if we have conflict in a request, for example, again, PostgreSQL 16 and 17, if we want installed together, it should cause a conflict. Yeah. The same situation is if we use the default name and also the conflict should lead all other examples in our slides. Conclusion is yours. Yeah, so uh, it was the demo, and uh, for the conclusion, let's just say that well, this approach also have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the advantages are, as you can see, the, the, there were no infrastructure changes needed, and the solution is kind of lightweight either for users and for maintainers because the spec file changes aren't that big. Uh, there are a few RPM macros um, uh, to, to do this stuff. And uh, for users, uh, it's kind of convenient to install the multiple versions of, of the packages we provide. What is this disadvantage is that um, this approach is uh, inconsistent to the teams and components in Fedora. And that's uh, also because every uh, component uh, has some uh, different needs. Uh, for example, Node.js, they, uh, they also use compact packages, but also provides um, Mm, parallel instability, and that's because the upstream uh, 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 just, it, it's easier to do this with Node.js packages because of the naming of, of the Node.js. And uh, that's uh, similar with Python. So, so this is a disadvantage that uh, it's not the same for all Fedora packages. Uh, this is like for the databases uh, thing. Um, so uh, that was the talk. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any question, please ask. Yeah, please. Um, so I noticed you're using this dash any suffix for your, for your virtual provider. Have you considered instead using like a, a namespace provider, like one of the module dash screen parentheses to the name inside? Uh, so that way, you have a common prefix, things like uh, DNS would then synthesize by looking Yes, yeah, so this topic, uh, yeah, sorry, we are asking about um, some similar functionality to DNF module list, if you want to list uh, the provided streams. Yes, yeah, so there was a discussion about this and it should be unified across all components because if you use any another components, you use another symbol, so it would be fine to agree to one concept and then implement it across all components. And then maybe it makes sense also implement some small feature, feature in DNF that should provide the same functionality like DNF module list. Uh, 
Um, so the question was, uh, if, if the user installs PostgreSQL 17 and then the default uh, version uh, of PostgreSQL stream changes, what should I do? Um, uh, so the answer is that um, in one uh, federal release, the default version of any stream does, doesn't ever change. So you've got new default version of, for example, PostgreSQL with new Fedora release. So this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, you should be dealing with this uh, during the upgrade process of the Fedora, and uh, I think that then you just use the uh, Postgres uh, upgrade scripts. Yeah. But, but definitely, if you want to swap from the default version to the oldest, it should be possible. But you just need to handle the PostgreSQL database or PostgreSQL server data to be correctly uh, migrated. Yeah, please. Yeah. Yes, and um, yes, if if the um, if the default version between a federal releases changes, um, then uh, you you get the new default version with the upgrade and. Uh, and you need to do the upgrade process, which is standard for PostgreSQL. In every PostgreSQL upgrade, you, you do this. Yeah. The question is if there is any possibility to lock uh, the version even through the upgrades of the Fedora. At least <laughs> you can switch it backward uh, after upgrade. And um, oh. also some uh, PostgreSQL um, versions, which are older, are not delivered to the newer Fedora. So, so it. it uh, if you want to stick with, for example, PostgreSQL 13 that is not uh, available in the next Fedora, yes, of course you can somehow hack it and put it into your machine, but we want to stay up to date with upstream. Yeah. Okay, I think, okay, so one more question. Yeah, so the question was if uh, there isn't a confusion um, between how the multiple uh, components in Fedora are packaged for multiple streams because some of them are parallel available and some of them are parallel installable. And if we can document it somehow. Um. <laughs> of course, we are planning some also paper or to Fedora magazine or somewhere else to document it. Or at least if, if you want to install multiple different packages in one transaction, you can just use PostgreSQL, any symbol, and we'll pick some version that uh, fits to your transaction. Yeah. So, so regardless the, the version. So the documentation it, uh, sh will be useful and, and, and we uh, will do, do it, but yeah, the, 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 the differences between the components will be just there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the question was um, about if we rec uh, require uh, some specific path to a, a binary, uh, if, uh, if 
uh, why it is, uh, or, or, or if the uh, behavior is really undefined. So yeah, the, uh, the FEDERA uh, guidelines also states that, uh, uh, as you uh, correctly mentioned, that in uh, the, uh, BIN and ETC, it's possible to, to require this uh, uh, path. But there is also stated there multiple packages, not even from the same version, but from different version, can provide the same directory or the same file. So there is still a place for confusion and for uncertainty, and, and you should um, you should know what you are doing if you are using this kind of um, uh, symbols or or the specific paths for the file. But um, but the uh, the problem with this is that. All the streams provide the same uh, user bin Postgres um, uh, file, so multiple streams in Postgres provide it, so DNF wouldn't know. So, yeah. Okay, Any I think questions? there is uh, no other questions, so thank you very much for, for your attention, and yeah, have a nice have conference. A